but I do regret those words, and um, I will be much more careful in the future. I want to thank my haters on YouTube, uh, Owen, Fireside Chat, others that uh, uh, that we, you know, I think they have a secret crush on me. I do. Absolutely. He hit the nail on the head. Wow. A pastor, a Trump pastor, an extremist apologizing for something. What could he possibly be apologizing for? What does he have or what could he possibly be ashamed of? There's so much stuff that he doesn't seem to care about at all, like rampant racism and homophobia and just general hate all the way around. Well, let me give you the context behind why this Trump pastor is talking about me and why he apologized in the first place. This is a video that I, it kind of went viral, I guess, and he re, you know, led him to respond to what I had to say about it. In case uh, anybody is unfamiliar, he's talking about Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. She, she's a justice on the Supreme Court. The apology came out mid-April 2024. This video is from late March 2024. See, the problem is Jumanji Jungle, Judge Jumanji Jungle lips. The, the problem with it is this, yeah, because what's coming out of her lips is monkey sense. That is one of the most racist things I have ever heard in my life. A common sense. It's jungle monkey sense pouring out of your liberal lips, and you are a... Like, why don't you just say the N-word? Curse to this nation. You are a rodent in our republic. Your mindset is messed up. Saying this stuff about Katanji Brown Jackson is absolutely grotesque. But you know what? It's on brand. This is what I expected from Shane Vaughn. You know what I didn't expect? The apology. Keep listening. It is the enemy of the people. Disrobe yourself because you have dishonored yourself. All right, so uh, that was his, uh, you know, his whole bit about Katandi Brown Jackson. It was just disgusting, straight up disgusting. When I first covered it, I talked about the history of why it's racist. For anybody that's unfamiliar, you can watch that video if you want. But bottom line is, it's a caricature that was used to denigrate ex-slaves back in the late 1800s and early mid 1900s. And when that stuff's brought up and, and shown today, it's just like disgusting, just straight up disgusting. So let's listen to his entire apology now and see if we think he's genuine or what. Again, mid-April 2024. Anyone that knows me personally knows there's not a racist bone in my body. Totally. But a lot of people don't know me personally, do they? So they go by what I say. And if you're just going by what I said that night... You have every right to be offended. Uh, that was unacceptable. And uh, I'm asking every one of you to forgive me if you can find it in your heart to do so. Every one of who exactly? Who is he asking? You know, this is an interesting, what, what would you call it? This is an interesting thought experiment, I guess you could say. You can't be canceled unless it's your audience doing the canceling. Quick interjection, this won't take long. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end. YouTube bases video reach off of watch time, so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further. Liking and subscribing goes a long way too. Finally, it would be awesome if you guys checked out my Patreon. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. You cannot be canceled unless you do something out of character that your audience doesn't expect you to do. If they think you're a good person and then you go out and say, you know, you're caught saying the N-word or something. Or maybe you just have no, like, you haven't espoused any views on politics whatsoever. Like, look at Hulk Hogan, for example. Hulk Hogan had not said a word to anybody about anything regarding politics, really. But then he was caught on, you know, on uh, recording saying the N-word and, and saying all kinds of racist stuff, like, forever ago. He said the, uh, the N-word, and he went on a big racist rant and everything. But since he hadn't talked about that stuff before, nobody expected this from the guy. And he was canceled by his followers. Or that, let me rephrase. When I say canceled, I mean his followers chose to just stop watching him because they were so disgusted by what he said and did. Now, Shane Vaughn is being 
canceled, quote unquote, for his racist comments, apparently. The reason I say that is because he has said some deeply horrific stuff in the past, which we'll get to. He thinks this one is crossing the line. That means his audience is unhappy with what he said. This wasn't about what he thought. This isn't about his feelings or his thoughts or his whatever. He wouldn't feel shame if he wasn't famous and getting backlash for it. He wouldn't care. If he was just a normal guy and he's at a family reunion and he said that and his like his brother is like, dude, that is just that is way too far. It's like, I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. I'm sure that's how it would play out. But he's got a group of people who were in his audience who are very unhappy with what he's saying because it's just disgusting. That's why he's responding, not because he feels shame over it, but because his audience didn't like what he said. And thank you for uh, letting me learn from this experience. And I will learn from this experience. I will try to be more careful with my speech. Bizarre thing to hear coming out of the mouth of a Trump extremist, a Trump pastor. I mean, I, I don't mean a pastor that likes Donald Trump. I mean a pastor of a Trump church, effectively. Donald Trump is famous for saying whatever, just saying scumbag stuff. That's why he's uncancelable, Donald Trump. That's why there's literally nothing he could do to get his audience to turn away because they know he's a scumbag. They like that about it. Or they've been inundated with so much of his scumbag behavior that, you know, they just don't care anymore. Like, okay, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but I like the guy. There are some people who are uncancelable, and Shane Vaughn, I guess, fancied himself one of those people. But, you know, uh, even Trump could be canceled, actually. Like I said, you can be canceled if what you do is outside your audience's expectations. You know what it would take for Trump to be canceled? For nobody to vote for him or have anything to do with him anymore? He would have to come out as gay or come out as trans. That's simple. All he'd have to do is come out as trans. And even then, there'd still be people voting for him. But the point is, it's something out of character that his fans don't expect from him. That is what it would take to cancel him. Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is 100 questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide, if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. Um, and there's no excuse. I'm not going to try to excuse anything, but I do. That's respectable. But again, I don't even believe that you care. But I do regret those words. And no, I think he regrets the backlash. Um, I will be much more careful in the future. I want to thank my haters on YouTube, uh, Owen, Fireside Chat, others. Holla. That, um, <laughs> uh, that we, you know, I think they have a secret crush on me. Yep. You, you got me. I do. Absolutely on point, Shane. I was trying to hide it. But since the cat's out of the bag now, you know, I guess I'll just go all in with it. Yep, I got a crush on you, bud. That's it. But I want to thank them for calling me out on that. I deserved it. I should have been called out on that. And I always listen to my enemies because enemies uh, many times will uh, tell you what you need to hear. And so I appreciate. Oh, so you want to, okay, great. If you're willing to listen to your enemies, quote unquote, by the way, I don't view you as an enemy. I don't want, I don't want you to think that I'm an enemy. We're not enemies. Okay. We're fellow Americans. I would like to think that you view me as somebody who disagrees with you, somebody who criticizes you and in turn is worthy of criticism. If you don't like something I do, hit me, do it. Just calling me an enemy is a disturbing way to view it, but that's neither here nor there. 
on that. And I always listen to my enemies because enemies uh, many times will uh, tell you what you need to hear. And so I appreciate them for calling me out. And again, like I would like to think that his followers would tell him when he's doing something that's not quite right. Like my followers have told me when I need to cite a source or when I get something incorrect or whatever, they, they tell me, you know, I'm in the chat, I'm in the comments, looking at this stuff, and I, I correct it just like that. Boom. There's no hiding from it. There's no embarrassment. Oh, my God, I messed something up. None of that. I just fix it. So either this guy has created an echo chamber with his fans and just gets rid of anybody he doesn't like or disagrees with him. Or they, they seem to be like straight up cult members or something. Like, I don't know. I mean, they're all members of the Trump cult. Yeah, I apologize. So I still think she's a dummy. I still think she talks monkey talk. Okay, Shane. That's what we're talking about, bud. Right there, that. Did you, let's just roll it back. Listen one more time. I, if Shane's watching, I want you to, I'm going to point out the problem, Okay. Now listen closely to what you say right here. I still think she talks monkey talk. That. That one right there. I still think that she's ignorant, dumb. You know what? If you want to say somebody talks monkey talk, make it a white person, okay, next time, so that there's no confusion. He shouldn't have even tried to back it up like he didn't mean it. Like, didn't you just admit to saying this stuff why are you really are you really going to sit here and double down on this she's ignorant dumb and should not be wearing a robe and should be living in the jungle as judge jumanji okay but that, that right there shane did you learn nothing nothing at all <laughs> what is happening are you kidding her physical appearance off limits he doesn't get it he doesn't understand he apologized for something that didn't get through his thick skull in the first place. The apology was good. It was on point. I liked that. You know, I appreciate it. Didn't give any excuses. Said that it is something that I need to learn from. I, I like that a lot. And then he just went over, went over and did the exact same thing. <laughs> this, is, this is like an SNL skit. How do you parody this? In that vein, let's talk about some of the other things that he said that I view to be very deeply racist. All right. This one is about Brittany Griner. This is from mid December, 2022, by the way, going into this, let me just explain who Brittany Griner is. If you don't remember a couple of years ago, she was playing for an American team in the WNBA and she's playing in the Russian league as well. Apparently a lot of people do that. And she went over to Russia Right when the war started, actually, I think it might have been, yeah, it was about nine, 10 months after the war in Ukraine started roughly, and Russia had her arrested, and they put her in jail and in a camp, a work camp, and sentenced her to like 10 years or something like that, and the U.S. finally did a prisoner swap for her, traded a notorious arms dealer for her. A notorious Russian arms dealer. So anyway, that's Brittany Griner. I'm glad she's back. She should have been, you know, I'm glad that they made the trade. There's still plenty of Russian people high up in our prison system that can be traded as a card if need be. So what does Brother Brittany do? Yeah, it's Brother Brittany. Look at the Adam's apple, darling. Brother Brittany throws... He's a transvestigator. I don't know if you've heard the term, but they believe that everybody's trans secretly and they're all trying to get one over on you i'm trans they're trans you're trans everyone's trans you know it, i think it probably started with like michelle obama who by the way he also believes is trans michelle obama but it just you know it spread from there it, it just got gigantic and now we've got transvestigators all over the place left right and center okay so we've got a we've got a claim that britney griner looks like a man I mean, you know, I, I could have some I could lay down some comments about Western beauty standards and the the racist undertones from that. But not not going to bother. Not going to bother. You know what? We're, we will only hit the truly racist stuff. OK, go on. Throws a basketball around and kneels during the Pledge of Allegiance to the. No, 
No, she didn't. That's just completely fabricated. I looked and I, I looked pretty hard and I saw absolutely no evidence of this. Uh, unless there's like some specific event he's talking about. I, I could not find anything that indicates that she kneels when the, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance or whatever happens. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, refusing to pledge his allegiance, does drugs, hates America, and Brother Brittany has a wife. Jesus Christ, dude. All of the, you know, this is, this is almost more, uh, yeah, I would say that this is more like anti-LGBT than you know, anti-black or, or then racist. I mean, it, it's all mixed in there. Why didn't he get backlash on this one? Seriously. Why was it that one where he talked about monkey sense and stuff? He has a wife. That's right. That's right. The gall. The, that's just too much, too far, man. Has a wife, you say? That's right. Brother Brittany has a wife. While the merchant of death is the Bill Gates of arms dealing. Our American. That's not true, by the way. He was very notorious in the arms dealing industry. But the Bill Gates of arms dealing? Like, what does that even mean? The U.S. set up a sting operation in other countries. He was funding, uh, you know, everybody. He's giving everybody, selling everybody weapons. It was crazy. It was bad. Really, really bad. There's a documentary about him, maybe a movie. I don't remember. And he's a terrible person, but he's out of the arms dealing game now. Somebody filled his slot when he was removed, I'm sure. So I'm not worried about him going back to arms dealing. He's served a sentence at least, and it's worth it to get an American citizen out of jail, in my opinion. You know, I'd want them to do the same for me. Of course, they wouldn't because I'm just some dude. But I'd like, you know, I appreciate that they try really hard. The U.S. government, Biden at least, tried really hard to get Griner out and succeeded. That's respectable, in my opinion. Is the Bill Gates of arms dealing. Our American fake pseudo government. This is just queuing on garbage felt that we could afford to let the merchant of death go that's all putin wanted was the merchant of death yeah they called him the merchant of death again documentary about him or, or a movie or something dude's out of the game okay somebody filled his slot you think that somebody goes away for 10 years and just the power vacuum sits there nobody fills it really no that's how the black market works unfortunately it takes a, a serious blow the black market will, but there are still international illegal arms deals that take place to this day. Like right now, it's happening. And this merchant of death guy has been in jail for, I don't know, 10 years or something like that in the US. So somebody stepped into his spot. When power vacuums exist, they are filled with the next guy in line every time. That's why we should have a different approach to the drug war, in my opinion. There are some things that you need to stamp out. You need to stamp out to the best of your ability, you know, human trafficking, CP rings, arms dealing, things like that. Anything you can do. Put moles in there and informants, pay informants, and do whatever it takes. But the drug war obviously needs to, you know, there needs to be a different approach in the US. That's a totally different subject. Anyway, the point is, there's a power vacuum, and it was filled by somebody, so... This dude is like useless to the arms dealing trade now. Wanted was the merchant of death. That was our ace of spades, darling. No, it wasn't. We have plenty of others. Age, darling. If you want to get Brittany back, brother Brittany, then why don't you go find a Russian prostitute that we've got in jail and give her back in exchange for brother Brittany because their value is about the same. I like I'm not understanding why did he not get hit for this one? Why didn't his audience like start yelling at him over this like 2 years ago or yeah you know, like a year and a half ago or something? You see I, Professor Toto says the quiet part out loud. And that's the key right there. I say what you've been thinking. That's why y'all love Trump so much. That's why I love him so much he says the quiet part out loud yeah so he calls himself professor toto that's his whole bit or whatever 
like Toto the dog from The Wizard of Oz grabbing the curtain, pulling it back so everyone can see what's really happening. Anyway, that's the whole bit. Says the quiet part out loud. Well, I don't feel that way. So it's not like I'm saying the quiet part. or I, It's not like you're speaking the quiet part that I'm secretly holding back or something. Just complete nonsense. This isn't saying the quiet part out loud, quote unquote. This is being a scumbag. Okay, yes. I suppose some people hide their scumbag behavior and scumbag beliefs. So uh, props to you for not hiding it. Glad that, you know, we can get it all on record and, and listen to it out in the open. That's nice, I suppose. Uh, just some context here if you're unfamiliar with Shane Vaughn. Let me show you this the opener from the video that I did the other day on him. This is uh, Shane Vaughn. He is a pastor, a Trump pastor, believes that Trump is sent by God and that Trump is the Messiah. He has said those words, Trump is the Messiah. I'm not joking. And what did Shane Vaughn decide to address in the video? Yes, I did call him out for racism immediately after that. I went on to talk about it. But he chose to address the racism part, not the fact that I called him a pastor of the Trump church, effectively. He just ignored that completely. Listen to this clip. This is how the dude feels about Donald Trump. This one is from mid-August 2022. Donald Trump carries the prophetic seal of the calling of God. He is Joseph. If you are anointed by Yahweh, for a specific plan and purpose, you are a Messiah. Yahshua was the Messiah of mankind, but Donald Trump is the Messiah of America. So Shane Vaughn called Donald Trump the Messiah. He's a, he is a Messiah. He believes him to be the son of man, as far as I can tell. Um, the second coming of Jesus, effectively, not like being filled with Jesus, not like Jesus coming down to earth again and embodying Donald Trump or whatever, but Donald Trump fulfilling the role that Jesus was supposed to fulfill when he came to earth the first time or when he comes back to earth, when he comes back. Donald Trump is doing that for him. So Jesus doesn't have to come back. That's the belief. Now, I haven't talked about Shane Vaughn in depth in a while, so I, I want to talk about him a little bit more. In the next couple of videos that release around the time that this one releases, I'm going to talk about his position on the LGBT community, and I'm going to talk about his religious beliefs, his, his Trump theology again. It's been a while since I hit that, and I have new clips to show you regarding his theology. So keep a lookout for those. They'll be releasing soon if I haven't already. And anyway, tell me what you think about this guy in the comments. This is just like shameless like everything about this is shame like he doesn't he there's no shame to be found he doesn't care about any of this the apology you know what i learned from his apology that he's really good at lying that's what i discovered I mean, tell me what you think about it in the comments it's just ridiculous